The one thing they do say, which I noticed because I was listening to a bunch of podcasts um, on January 6th when the thing happened at the Capitol. And they were in this book, they say that these events are going to start devaluing um, like basically there's going to be a massive devaluation. And I remember that thing that happened on the 6th, the, the storming of the Capitol, it didn't really reflect itself in the market the same way. Bitcoin kind of stayed the same. Everything else kind of stayed the same. Stocks were going up. I remember a lot of people that I was listening to, and they, these were just people who are like, you know, speculating constantly and they have their podcast and they were saying something is, is not right. Something is disconnected here from reality. So that is one thing that the book like, it, it was it was suspecting that during this period you're going to see um, devaluation constantly. Maybe it's happening and we're not seeing it. Um, oh no no no! It, it is happening. Mm -hmm. There are reports that uh, the cost of food is already starting to skyrocket, going up double digit percentages. Uh, fast food and and dining it's just it's way up. So there there's major predictions of food shortages and or food inflation. So Texas had a food shortage because of the winter storm. It made it impossible for trucks to come in. But now one of, the thing, one of the things I'm seeing a lot of, people don't notice this stuff because we're basically frogs in a pot. Mm. We're coming to a slow boil and we don't realize it. I, I, I saw someone on Twitter say, I just went to the grocery store to buy a week's worth of groceries and I couldn't believe it was almost double what I normally spend. A lot of people aren't really paying attention to how much it's costing them. And I think there's a couple of reasons for it. For one, frogs in, in a pot, you don't really notice these gradual changes. But a lot of people just don't have money anyway. You're, we're not getting the stimulus. A lot of people are out of work. They're on unemployment. So they're like, I don't know not paying my rent. They're not really focused on the cost of goods right now, but they are definitely going up. The stock market is a strange disconnect, mm. but maybe it's just because it's a delayed reaction. Yeah, it seems like it's six to with eight months bit, behind. With Bitcoin going up to 50, was it $56,000 for Bitcoin? Before it dipped again. Yeah. Before it yeah. dipped again. That says something. It went in only a few months. Mm -hmm. It went from 13,000 in November to what, uh, February, 56,000. In only a few months, it skyrocketed that much. That says something about the confidence of, of the stock market and this country. And I have to wonder if we are just, like you mentioned, six to eight months delayed before the market takes a hard nosedive. Mm -hmm. You know, you basically convinced me that it was 2008 is because the, when the sparks flew of September 11th, it was anxiety. And that, if that's a fall, if that's yeah. a, then that's... It was yeah. anxiety. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the part of the constellation. You really have to look at our our behavior. And we preemptively strike, you know, we, we, we preemptively went after a nation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Iraq, but they predicted, Libya. They, they predicted that in, in the crisis or did they predict that at some All point? of that was during the crisis that I mentioned. So that was a little early, the, the, the preemptive strike against another country. Right, Libya that was, was later. And, and you got to wonder, I mean, in the same thing is like, you know, when you are exiting um, the real fall, going into the real winter one starts to look like the other by the end of right. fall and the beginning of winter it does just kind of fade into one another so this still could make sense in that respect but i mean like there's this was just the inciting incident and then so like there's a lot of ways of looking at like what are the sequence of events and where does it culminate like where does it go i from think there? when it comes to predictions it's very difficult uh d depending on your ability to calculate the variables in front of you you can make better and better predictions mm -hmm. it sounds like these guys are very, very smart. And they were able to see a wide range of variables and track which they thought was the highest probability based on the things that were going to happen in their time period and based on history. In which case, they were able to, for, I would say, fairly accurately predict things. We don't expect people to be actual psychics who can tell you on this date at this time, the lottery number will be this. But someone for someone to say, there will be an economic catalyst. There will be insurrection and militias. There will be fights in the streets. And it's like all that stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the other thing I think people should understand, too, is, is semantics and, and the language they use. Is it fair to say when they mention the militias fighting, would it be fair to say, well, we've seen right and left clashes over the past four or five years? in suburbs and, and, you know, outlying areas. Yeah. We've seen Proud Boys and Antifa. We've seen right-wing groups putting on shields and helmets and bats and going and fighting the left. And we've seen the culmination of le a left-wing guy walking up to a right-wing dude and just putting two bullets in his chest. Is that basically what they're talking about? My opinion is it's fair to say yes. It's, it's definitely fair to say because, again, you look at the people, like, were there protests in previous seasons? Yes. Like, what does the action look like here? It's, it's you know, tensions got a lot higher here. 
And then, I mean, you can also go into, um, it's kind of interesting because when you mention that, I, I often hear the same trigger words, like why are we hearing the word insurrection, secession? Um, you know, obviously the CDC, the spread of a new communicable disease, that blew my mind when I heard that part of it. But then even going to people like Catherine Austin Fitz, and you, you could say what you think about her theories, but she was saying, you know, when she researched the 37 protests that happened in 2020, 34 of them happened within a very short um, mileage around central, well, Federal Reserve banks, and that a lot of <laughs> infrastructure was destroyed around that. Her theory um, was that it was to basically buy that infrastructure for pennies on the dollar, build up the smart grid. Because my big question is here is like, where are we heading? How can we visualize the spring? What is it going to look like? Because if it also changes, I mean, most people, they're just like war. Is there going to be war? That's what they're afraid of. But it's also like, how is the economy going to change? Everything is already moving towards blockchain. It's moving more digital. A lot more, we're a lot more reliant on the technology. Um, I think in Africa, the first baby was, you know, unborn child was already put on the blockchain. And like the moving in this direction, and I've heard the, the, the big change, the great reset, moving from shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism, which is, you know, basically it's just a restructuring of what our economy is now. And I just find it very interesting. It's definitely going more digital. Um, I think a Bitcoin is going to be worth a million bucks and it's going to be worth a million bucks relatively soon. By relative, I mean within a few years, a I few think years. one Bitcoin will be a million dollars. It's mm -hmm. going to be 75K really fast. If you look at the charts, how it shot up to like 38, back down to 27, up to 56, back down to 45. It's going up to 75, mm -hmm. back down to 62. But while, while, while you can look at Bitcoin and predict to a certain degree, you can like actually create, you know, like here's what it did. Here's what it will likely do. I think the reason we saw this massive jump was very different than the previous. What we saw previously with Bitcoin was... I just popular uh, mentions. People started talking about Bitcoin. They were buying it, made the price go up, then made mo more people talk about it. And then it created a snowball rolling down a hill where everyone's like, Bitcoin's so high and everyone's buying it. I think Bitcoin skyrocketed this time because you have chaos, uncertainty, destabilization, capital insurrection, Donald Trump's claims of fraud, all of this stuff. Mass and people, inflation. And mass inflation from mm -hmm. the previous year. So now you're looking at in, you know um, insurance companies, foreign countries, now, now there's rumors that Twitter may buy up a large portion of uh, Bitcoin. I think that's proven not true because they did that apparently to buy Tidal, I guess. But a lot of people are speculating who's going to be the next big company to put their balance sheet in Bitcoin because it's a safer bet than dollars right now. Tesla. Tesla. Definitely. Move the needle a bit. There's this thing. I'm trying to think of the name. It was um, Facebook, I believe. It has, it's not a, I don't even think it's a crypto, but it's, it's a different kind of asset that is based upon the average of all currencies everywhere. So it's not mainly based in one. And that's a protection, protectionary thing where like if the dollar all of a sudden fails, but everything else stays stable, then you don't feel it that much. Was that the yeah. Libra token? That the Libra, that's what it is. Yeah. Libra. Mm -hmm. they, really? they started it and then the SEC hit them pretty hard and really? said it was a security, so they pulled back on the program. I don't know much more. Interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't look too much deeper into that either, but I, I started seeing in this period, a lot of people are looking forward to the high and they're wondering like what's stable and what has endurance? What's going to last? Like, is Bitcoin always going to be the gold standard for crypto? You know, I, I, I hear it. this talk a lot, you know. I and think so. First in, best dressed. I don't see why not. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my, my question is, how bad will things get? And, uh, you know, look, I often talk about fifth generational civil war, mm -hmm. information warfare, manipulation. What do you think? Do you think, you think we're in like a civil war period? I've, uh, so I've often thought, like, when they said... The, the weapons of war will constantly be the most powerful and effective weapons of war. And this time around, I wonder if it's, it's, it doesn't seem like explosions. I think you're right. It has to do with the colonization of the mind. Um, I mean, you could go all the way back to the, um, what was it the CIA director, William Casey in the eighties that said like our disinformation program will be complete when everything the American public believes is false. I mean, that's a meme I, I've found that also in several books. You know, I like there's also William Colby beforehand, which was basically saying, yeah, we definitely have, you know, um, we've infiltrated journalism. We have to because we have to control the narrative in many ways. 
So the narrative is huge. Like if you get people following the narrative, what was it Aldous Huxley who said eventually when when you have people knowing that they're being oppressed, they revolt. But if you can give them enough bread and circuses or just bring them their their pharmaceutical revolution, right? Then how do you get people to be quite happy in their servitude? So basically accepting the way things that are going. Well, I would imagine you have to control the narrative. So yeah. th then I start taking a look at like, well, what's happening today? Social media, it's so much easier for everyone in this room is going to have a different feed. We're going to have something different showing up on my feed than your feed. And all of that is, is part of our digital twinning, right? We all have a digital avatar potentially run through different simulations to see how, you know, how is Ben Joseph Stewart with all his data going to behave if he gets these, this kind of media, you know, it's, I think, you know, we've heard enough of that, even Elon Musk saying AI writing blogs and just like, if something doesn't hit, just <clears throat> slightly adjust, slightly adjust, slightly adjust. I think it's information. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to timcast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.